In sports world, and our attention now turns to racing, and with Max Presnell still on that well-earned holiday, we're joined in the studio this morning by one of the great personalities of the, the sport of kings and Des Hoisted. Des, welcome to the program. I appreciate that, David. Thanks very much. It's a while since I saw you. Yes, it's seven or eight years, but you're looking wonderful. Yeah, I've kicked on. Yeah. You know, I've... Uh... Well, I've got a good healthy life, mate, that's what it is. One man that has kicked on is John Hawkes. Yesterday, Insomniac, the four-year-old, saw him pass the $10 million mark in a season uh, at Eagle Farm yesterday. It's, a, it's an amazing performance, isn't it? $10 million, you know, you're only going back a few years, and we remember when uh, Bart Cummings and Tommy Smith cracked the $2 million. I think that was about 10 years ago. They both cracked it almost on the same day. And here we go, less than a decade later, or just on a decade later, and someone's up to 10. It just shows you the the way that prize money's increased. Yeah, truly a great training performance. And Wayne Wilson joins us now from our Brisbane studios. And uh, Clary Connors talking about uh, trainer success yesterday with Tripping and Larry Cassidy aboard, Wayne. Yes, and it was a good win too by Tripping. Overdue success for Clary because well, Super Slew won the Hollandale Cup early in our carnival up here. He was right out of luck in the Classic races and the Brisbane Cup. And then he was narrowly beaten with Tambor in the Main Stakes. So he deserved to win a big one. And he did that yesterday with Tripping. And she looks as though she's a very good filly, a filly with the, with the real future, the way she finished off this race yesterday. Mamzelle Padrill, the favourite, had surged to the lead at the 200 metre point, but then Tripping got the run on the inside, burst away, and then held a late challenge by Bionic Bess. I thought the run by the Bionic Bess was very good, David, because she was a long way back coming to the home turn. They got home in 35 seconds, and she made up tremendous ground. Here they are as they hit the straight now, and we're looking for... Uh, well, we've got Cam Grande. This is the Mercedes-Benz flying. That's Cam Grande moving up on the outside of Mars Party. This fellow really is a super sprinter, Cam Grande, and it's likely that he'll head now for the eyeliner liner stakes at Ipswich, but look at him in the last little bit there. He ran very fast time and won with great authority. He is a, a star sprinter of the future. Future, there's no doubt about that. Well, Des, just talking about that, uh, it was described yesterday by Wayne Harris King Grande as an absolute freak. Would you go along with that assessment? Well, he's obviously a very good horse, Dave, but uh, he's only lost one race in his career, and I don't know how he ever got beaten out of a place in that, uh, that race at Rose Hill. But the great thing about him is that Wayne will no doubt agree with me is the fact that he can come from an outside barrier, he flies out of the machine, and when he gets there, you know, he, he'll either share the lead or lead on his own, and he can find something at the finish. Now, uh, that's pretty unusual in, in, in a sprinter that has speed uh, in the early stages. They frequently do not run home, but this bloke does, and obviously he's an outstanding horse, Wayne. Yes, there's no doubt about that, Des. He's got that adaptability to relax early in his race, as Cliff Bashford, his trainer and part owner, believes that the horse is not fully matured as yet, so when he gains a little bit of maturity and linked that up with his known ability and what he's already shown us, he really has a, a future ahead of him. I'd go as far as to say he could be one of the best sprinters in Australia. Certainly today he is. He'll prove it in the spring when well, he takes on some the, of the big races. He's probably the new Hariba. Yes, 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 he could be. He could be there ready to challenge Ariba mm -hmm. during the spring in Melbourne if Ariba comes back. OK, well, the Tatch yesterday was also a great excitement, but unfortunately we can't bring you the uh, winter stakes there. But uh, the tough little chestnut uh, Sonata proved once and for all that uh, it is a horse to be reckoned with, but the punters left her alone yesterday, Wayne. Yes, they stayed clear of it. They thought she was a little bit out of a depth, but she proved them wrong. There she is in third position as they straighten up. Broan had gone to the lead. Stony Bays has spent force. Sonata on the outside. Look at her knuckled down. Young Mark Lister, an apprentice jockey, riding very hard. And here are the big guns coming on the outside. Pratara's Bay, the great and revenge just inside of Pratara's Bay. They looked as though they were going to swamp her, but she refused to be, uh, she refused to surrender. She just kicked on and she held them in the run to the line. And a great win there by Mark Lister, the young apprentice jockey. Laurie Did Laurie Mayfield Smith take a real punt there, Wayne, by oh, yeah. engaging him yesterday? Yes, it certainly was. He's a three kilo boy and he couldn't claim the allowance. So it was actually a penalty that he put on the horse's back. But he knew that Mark knew the filly extremely well and he had full confidence in him riding her as he did yesterday. And it was a great moment for young Mark because his dad, Arthur Lister, had won the cup back in 66 and 67 on Winfrey. So he was emulating his dad's performances yesterday by winning on Sonata. And talking about great family feelings, uh, Des, yesterday at Rose Hill Gardens in the uh, Southern Cross over 1,500 metres, the Guy, the Guy family elated at the performance of uh, Ray's Dream. Yeah, well, that's a lovely story. We'll talk about the race first. This is, uh, there are two compulsive leaders in this, Romden and Dancing Sun. Uh, Romden with the blinkers is in front here. Ray's Dream had a lovely sit right behind the two of them. And his form was very good too, so he just swept past Romden. Uh, just for a fleeting second or two, Bruego with the red blinkers is a chance and coming down the outside is catapult and the yellow blinkers 
But uh, Ray's dream had everything going for him yesterday and he held on well to beat Dancing Sun Catapult and still a good run by Brewago to finish close up fourth with that weight. Well, Corey Brown gave up the ride on Ray's dream to ride Brewago, but uh, obviously uh, Lenny Beasley and the chase of that 100 uh, wins for the, uh, for the season is well on target. Yes, he only needs seven. Of course, Corey has been riding Brewago and he spent some time with Neil Campton, so I suppose he felt committed to uh, the top weight. Bruego had the form there, but uh, the other horse with the pull in the weights was far too good for him. Catapult, I think, is a horse uh, with a win coming up. He has been a disappointment, but he went to the...